Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on. Oh boy, that is really good. And that's in agreement with what viewer Rob M6772 wrote. Good morning, Mark. A light touch, a good cup of coffee. Let the caffeine do the work. Absolutely. He also added, happy birthday, Lori. My sister-in-law Lori's birthday was uh, last week. So one more time, happy birthday, Lori. Uh, but yeah, this morning we're using uh, Cafe Bustello, Cafe Bustello uh, Espresso Instant Coffee. Uh, and yeah, I think it's the second week in a row that we're using this. This is really a, this is a really good, smooth, nice tasting instant coffee. And uh, the reason why we're using this is because we have an availability update from uh, viewer Rodney Ripplinger, who, uh, who wrote, Hi Mark, you might check your local Walmart for Cafe Bustello. They have all that brand of coffee, although perhaps not the instant version. Other versions are regular coffee, ground in vacuum pack and cans. Uh, Fuzzy, a YouTube shaver from Louisiana, turned me on to Bustello. Uh, I see they also make a supreme freeze-dried instant version. Uh, check Walmart online. We're going to check Walmart online, absolutely. I bought this at uh, Amazon, Amazon.com, and I think Walmart has this and I think maybe possibly a better price. I'm going to have to check again. But uh, yeah, nice to know that uh, the brand Cafe Bustello in its other forms, ground and freeze-dried and whatnot, uh, are avail is available at uh, Walmart. And also, uh, we'll check walmart.com. Check it online for Cafe Bustello. We'll get you a link to uh, all their offerings on Walmart, so you can check specifically on Walmart. And we'll uh, get that below in the description. So, Rodney, thanks very, very much for that. Hang on one more sip. Boy, that is, <laughs> that is, that is really, really good. Oh, almost forgot to show you my beautiful, beautiful coffee mug this morning, courtesy of viewer Jamie Horn, the Indiana Jones coffee mug. Yeah, off on a new adventure to find a great cup of coffee right there. Check out that badge artwork. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? Thanks again to Jamie. Definitely a favorite here. Uh, on the program, this uh, this coffee mug, Indiana Jones, absolutely fantastic. And as we like to say on the show, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug, let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Absolutely. Okay, one more sip. This really is a very good, flavorful, instant cup of coffee. Mm. That is really, really good. And hey, if you're taking me along on uh, your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really, really do appreciate that. Uh, for those of you who are listening to the podcast this morning, thanks very much for tuning in. Really do appreciate that. Well, we have got a really, really great show for you this morning. We've got a couple of great shaving tips. We have a shave den visit, uh, and we also have another kind of shave den visit, so to speak, that's kind of uh, uh, out of this world, so to speak. Uh, and that ties into something else that I came across. Well, more on that later. Check that out in the show in the extra shaving tip segment. We also have some uh, great refill comments. We've got some great new wet shaving gear to show you this morning. And also we're going to round it out. We're going to round it out, round it off. Well, we're going to finish up <laughs> with some really, really terrific questions and comments. So thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. So let's do like we do every week. <laughs> let's kick the show off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Well, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Weezer, and that's spelled W-H-E-E-Z-E-R-E. -E -E. I believe it's pronounced Weezer. And he writes, Hi, Mark. Although I am not a fanatic about wet shaving, I do enjoy the benefits of using quality soaps, etc., and shaving with a quality razor. I own two razors, six soaps, splashes, and three brushes, all of which will last me a long time. I've learned quite a bit from watching your show and others, and I thought I could add something of my observations. Being on my own private well and septic system, 
comes with the challenge of conserving water and being careful not to put damaging things down the drain. The city dweller isn't as concerned with the need for conservation. My routine consists of putting hot water in the thermos and washing my face with a face towel, soap, and hot water. I find this cleans, exfoliates, and prepares my beard as well as a pre-shave. I use the face towel to wet my face as needed and bowl lather. By not allowing the faucet to run except as needed, I use only a total of a half gallon of water. This includes cleaning my razor after every use. As for cleaning my razor, I use the hot water from the thermos and a toothbrush to clean my three-piece Edwin Jagger 316 razor. Oh, that's a nice razor. <laughs> I know Mark Bagwell, I think it was him, actually was Bill Murphy. That was Bill Murphy who sent us the email regarding uh, throwing the remains of stubble and lather into the toilet. Okay, so it was Bill Murphy. Uh, well, let me start over. I know Bill Murphy uh, flushes his excess soap down the toilet instead of the drain, but this can also contribute coating the drain pipes with a gelatinous residue and also contributes to slowing down the velocity of the drain water. I used to be in the septic business, and I have seen it all, so to speak. What I do is wipe my excess lather with a paper towel and put it in the garbage. This eliminates it going down the drain altogether. Yes, I know I'm wasting paper towels, but I'm not perfect. My wife can attest to that. I hope this gives everyone a different view and finds it interesting. Regards, Weezer. He also adds here, I forgot one thing about splashes, colognes, etc. I tend to be sloppy and either put on too much or drip it down my arm. I mentioned this to my wife and she suggested to add the splash to one of her cotton makeup pads and then put it on my face. It works quite well and you can vary the strength of the scent accurately. Regards, Weezer. Hey, Weezer, thanks again for a couple of great shaving tips, especially concerning the continuing and ongoing conversation regarding uh, not clogging that sink drain. Uh, absolutely, really, really great, great tips there. And thanks again for the tip about uh, using a cotton makeup pad for splashes and colognes, aftershave splashes and colognes, and that sort of thing. Thank you very, very much. And to say thank you, for you and only you, right there, <laughs> an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and if I use your shaving tip here on the Monday Morning Mailbag Shaving Tip segment, uh, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Weezer, thanks again for a really, really terrific shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have an extra shaving tip and it comes from viewer Kevin Weiss. And Kevin writes, hello, Mark. I always like the segments where your audience uses things that would normally be thrown away for their shave den. Below is a box that my Shield 316L AC razor came packed in. Nothing fancy, and to be honest, it almost got the heave ho. Then I had an epiphany. My Phoenix shaving alum block and the docking system always leak alum after use. I put the docking system and the block in the box and never worry about it again. After use, I keep the top open until it dries and then close it up for the next shave. If I drew little aliens on it, maybe Douglas would make me a partner. <laughs> that's, that's great. Maybe Douglas will see this and, and use this and offer as an item. Yeah, and yeah, maybe he should make you a partner. <laughs> Hope you are well, Kevin Weiss. Kevin, thanks very, very much for a terrific, terrific extra shaving tip this morning. There you go, folks. If you happen to acquire a Shield 316L AC razor, don't throw away that box. You can use it uh, for your Allen block and docking system uh, from Phoenix Shaving. Hey, Kevin, thanks very, very much for a terrific, terrific shaving tip. Well, this morning we have a couple of shave den visits. Up first is something from viewer Chris Bodrab. Now, Chris very, very kindly sent the channel this beautiful custom George shaving brush. Chris recently 
uh, took it upon himself to learn how to make shaving brushes. He bought all the equipment and he created this George shaving brush right here. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. We featured this in last week's Monday morning mailbag in the uh, questions and comments section. So if you missed it, check that out from last week. It really is an absolutely one of a kind, gorgeous shaving brush. Thank you very, very much, Chris. Well, Chris sent along some photos and video giving us a tour of all the brushes he's created so far. Uh, and he wrote, yep, poured all the resin and turn them all on the lathe. I am a little bit obsessive. <laughs> Just learning to do this, so I've been trying to get in a lot of practice. Also, much like traditional wet shaving itself, there is something very zen and relaxing about turning the handles and even the endless sanding and polishing. The turning typically doesn't take long, maybe 30 minutes or less, depending on the design, but the sanding and polishing can take a couple of hours for each one. Those are absolutely beautiful, Chris. My goodness, uh, fantastic. You know, bravo, good for you for uh, taking it. You know, this is very inspiring is what I'm saying. You, you, you took the personal initiative to learn how to do this and you went ahead and did it. It's absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for the uh, mini tour of all these beautiful shaving brushes that you've created so far. And again, please feel free to show us uh, some additional brushes in your shave den that you've created. I know viewers would be very, very interested in seeing how your creative skills are progressing in making these shave brush handles and sh making shave brushes. Absolutely fantastic, Chris. So thanks very much for sending that along. Really do appreciate it. Uh, our second shave den visit uh, is courtesy of Glenn Martin. Now, he sent some information regarding a shave den of sorts that is uh, <laughs> out of this world, outer space, so to speak. Uh, and he wrote, Hi, Mark. This week is the anniversary of the first man on the moon. Thought you might enjoy this bit of wet shaving history. Now, he sent along a link to a website which discusses how they are conserving astronaut Michael Collins' Apollo 11 Razor. Yeah, and it's and the article is called Conserving Michael Collins Apollo 11 Razor. Now, this is astronaut Michael Collins shaving set, which traveled with him on the Apollo 11 mission in 1969. The set consists of a tube of Old Spice brushless shaving cream and a Gillette Techmatic razor. Now, here's what they say about the razor. Uh, the Gillette Techmatic razor was designed with a novel solution for changing the blade. The cream-colored plastic head is actually a removable cartridge with a spooled stainless steel blade. Once the edge became dull, the lever on the back could be used to wind it onto the next portion of the blade. How about that? That is really, really neat. And that was on the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. That is absolutely fantastic. Really, really neat that they're conserving this piece of wet shaving history, so to speak, even though <laughs> he took along brushless shaving cream, Old Spice brushless shaving cream. That's really, really neat. But this got me to thinking. Now, I, I, I have something, well, you could call this a, a third shave den visit, if you will. This got me to thinking about something that I've had for quite some time. I've had it many, many years, and I've been meaning to show it to you. And this is the perfect opportunity to do so because that Techmatic has a, um, uh, a razor head that winds a stainless steel blade inside. So when, when a portion of that, that blade becomes dull, you could wind it to the next area of that blade and have a fresh, fresh cutting edge, so to speak, without having to replace that until you wind all the way through that stainless steel ribbon, so to speak, that is in that plastic razor head. Now, many years ago, my late Uncle Ernie gave me uh, an old razor that he had laying around. He didn't want it, and he, he also gave me all the blades, so to speak. This is when I was trying to figure out how to shave. I was a young man. Should I use electric? I really wasn't keen on using a cartridge. Tried that. This is when I tried doing the traditional wet shave, and you know, I wasn't listening to my dad, and you know, all those things that a stubborn young man comes across because of his own stupidity, to be honest with you. Anyhow, my Uncle Ernie gave me this, and I have it. And I'm so glad I found it because I've been looking for it, and lo and behold, I found it for this episode. This is uh, known as the Real Shave. Check out this razor. It's the Real Shave razor, right? See that? 
I think this might date from maybe it's a it's it looks like it's a bakelite handle. So maybe this dates from the 1940s. I'm not entirely sure, but check it out. This little knob in the center, this little center knob on the handle holds this clamp in place. And what you do is you unwind that like that and it removes that clamp. And then this door swings open like that. Okay, now on the back, you have this little lever here that winds. Okay, that lever winds. Okay, see that? Real shave like that. Let me try to get that so it's not too reflective. Okay, real shave. Okay, so you open it up and it has a little take up. Uh, what is that? Like a little take up spool right here. Well, uh, my uncle also gave me some of the unopened, unused, real shave refill cartridges. And I have, I have a lot of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I probably have a dozen of these. And my sister-in-law, Marilyn, came across some of these as well. So I think I have another half dozen or so uh, in the shave den that I have to dig through and I have to find, actually. Uh, unless the ones that she gave me are part of this box. I can't remember. But... Anyhow, this is what it looks like. You open it up and um, uh, you pull out the instruction right here. Okay, so here's the cartridge. It came sealed in a plastic, a plastic case like this, okay? And then on, on this side here is the actual cutting blade right there. See that cutting blade right there? And then you have these instructions here that, uh, let me open that up for you. Uh, okay, get it open. There it is, right there. You get it open, and it tells you how to, you know, open it up, how to load it, you know, how to close it, and then, you know, then you're good to go. So the real shave division of Warner, Warner Hudnut Incorporated. They were out of uh, New York, New York, right there. How about that, huh? So anyhow, I already have one of these cartridges opened up. I opened up one of these before. Uh, before cameras rolled and I thought I'd I'd load it for you and I was fumbling around with it earlier before cameras rolled to try to understand how <laughs> how to how to how to load this and this is how you load it you uh, you hold it upside down like this and you have the cartridge like this and you slide it in okay and it took I remember it took me a little bit to get this lined up here and I want to make sure that it that it bumps up there and that it doesn't uh, Okay, let me just make sure. Let me make sure that's going in there. There it is. Okay. Okay, there it is. It clicked in. Let me go in on just a little more. Press that in. I'll make sure I don't break the handle when pressing this in. Okay. Uh, not quite. Let me just make sure maybe on this side here. It is <laughs> it is vintage. Hang on one minute. Let me just let me set it down. Let me do it like this so I'm not breaking anything on camera. There it is. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so that's snapped into place. So there it is. Okay, it's in place. Okay, and then you close it up like that. Okay, and then you tighten it down like that. That clamps it down. And there's the blade right in there like that. And now you're good to go. And you can have a shave with this thing. And I remember using this. I, I used these. And I thought, wow, look at all the money I'm going to save, you know. A <laughs> young man, I don't have to buy a razor. I don't have to buy d disposable cartridges. I don't have to buy, uh, you know, uh, uh, razor blades or a safety razor. Look at this. I got this. And I remember cutting my face up, something, <laughs> something terrible with this, because I didn't understand the proper prep. All I wanted was somebody to say, here's how you do it. And uh, my father was, he wouldn't say, he, my father want, want, just his approach to teaching someone how to do something was, watch me. And then he would do it and say, okay, there you go. You know, I would, you know, he wanted me to learn by osmosis, by observation. And I kind of needed someone to say, this is how you do it. Step one, step two, step three, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so I, 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 I didn't throw it out. I, I hung on to it. And lo and behold, all these years later here, I'm talking about the traditional wet shave and I have another vintage razor, the real shave that, uh, I don't know. Should I use this? You think those blades are still good? I don't know. I, I really don't know how, uh, how reliable these are anymore. Uh, maybe I'll just hang on to it as a vintage piece. I do have a little bit of trepidation of wanting to shave with it, but it really, really is kind of neat. Here, I'll show you how I can turn the blade. Okay? Let me see. Let me see. Actually, it's not turning. <laughs> I think it's kind of sticky in the cartridge there. Yeah? 
it's in there, but it's not, yeah, it's not turning. It's locked in there. So who knows? Maybe there's a, maybe the oil that was used to preserve the, to preserve that, that ribbon of blade is kind of, um, kind of uh, uh, solidified a little bit. So it makes uh, turning that a little impossible. So maybe I won't be able to shave with it because of that. So uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll figure out a solution. Well, we'll open that. We'll we'll open that up later and and put it away. But there it is, the real shave. And I got to thinking about this because of the uh, technatic that uh, astronaut Michael Collins took on the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. So my thanks to uh, Glenn Martin for sending along that uh, historical piece of shaving history that jogged my memory about this. And also thank you to uh, viewer Chris Bodrab again for sending along the uh, George shaving brush and also giving us a tour of all the beautiful brushes that he has created so far. Gentlemen, thank you both very, very much. Well, this week we have a pet visit, and it comes courtesy of viewer James Sefton, who gives us an update on Winston. And he writes, hey, Mark, just want to send a recent photo of Winston, my grandkid's puppy. He's everybody's friend and growing up so fast. He's still at the awkward puppy stage, but he loves to play and sleep. Maybe you could put him on the 3MB sometime in the future. Thanks and take care. James Sefton. Well, James, I'm going to put them on this week because the way puppies grow, before you know it, they become full-grown dogs, and we don't want to miss this stage of his growth, which is why we're putting them on immediately uh, this week's show because uh, in two weeks, he'll be even larger. <laughs> so we don't want to miss this stage of his growth. So thanks very much for sending it along. Really do appreciate it. There you go, folks. Winston getting bigger every week. Thanks again, James. Really do appreciate it. Well, just wanted to give you an update to the recent Hendricks Classics and Company giveaway on a previous Monday morning mailbag. Pete Hendricks very kindly sent along watermelon shave soap and aftershave splash. Now, he also sent this one to the channel that we reviewed. Oh, and that's a terrific watermelon scent. Perfect for the summer season, absolutely. And uh, Pete's, again, sent along a brand new shave soap and aftershave splash, both in the watermelon scent. And uh, we had a giveaway, and Pete selected the winner, and the winner was David Richland. And David very kindly sent along his shipping address to uh, the channel, and we packaged up the uh, shave soap and aftershave splash and shipped it off to him. He should be receiving it any day now, so just want to let you know that uh, the winner did come forward, claimed the prize, and it was David Richland. So uh, thanks again to uh, Pete Hendricks and everyone at Hendricks Classics and Company for very kindly sponsoring the uh, Watermelon Shave Soap and Aftershave Splash giveaway on the Monday Morning Mailbag. And congratulations to winner David Richland. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and now right here on YouTube. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one minute. Oh, yeah, that is a wonderfully smooth cup of instant coffee. Cafe Bustello, once more, espresso instant coffee. Yeah, I mean, and you can see I'm using, <laughs> I really, I'm really going through this. I mean, it, it is on the pricey side. You know, you can see I've already used half a jar already. Uh, but, uh, yeah, very, very good cup of instant coffee. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying their other coffees in the ground, the freeze-dried that sort of thing. Really, really terrific. And we're going to check out Walmart and actually look at the store shelves and see if they have that there. 
see if they have it online, that sort of thing. So thanks to Rodney Ripplinger again for the heads up on that. Hang on one minute, one more sip. Mmm, that is good. And once more, enjoying this beautiful Indiana Jones coffee mug that came courtesy of viewer Jamie Horn. Jamie, thank you again very, very much. Love that badge art. I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Indiana Jones off on another coffee-finding adventure. And we found a good one this morning again, even though it's instant, Cafe Bustello. Hang on one minute, one more. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we got some great refill comments this morning. Let's kick things off with something from uh, Brian Gallatin. I hope I pronounced your last name correctly, Brian. And he writes, good morning, Mark. Another superb Monday morning mailbag. Thank you so much for checking out the Salsa Bowl. I know you will not be disappointed. Now, this is in regards to a Salsa Bowl that is on sale at Walmart for less than a dollar. I think it's like 97 cents. I did pick one up. I ordered it online. They delivered it to the house. Uh, I didn't go to the store to see if it was on the shelf. I just saw it online and said, you know what? I'm going to buy it online because uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to get back to my, my local Walmart. Uh, but yeah, this is nice. This is very, very similar to the Salsa Bowl that we bought at Dollar General uh, to use as a, a as a shaving bowl, a lathering bowl. The only difference is, as Brian pointed out, is that this has a little rough exterior here, interior rather, a rough interior, a rough exterior, and a rough interior. Let me say, to, let me put it that way. Whereas the Dollar General bowl has a little rough exterior, but the interior is smooth. So I think that a little bit of tooth that this one has on the inside will help generate lather a little more quickly. So we're definitely going to use this. And for less than a buck, <laughs> what a great little lathering bowl. So thanks, thanks Brian, for the heads up on that. Uh, he continues here. I know you will not be disappointed. I do have a question for you. What is a great fall winter shave soap scent? I exclusively bowl lather except with a shave stick. I do prefer Cropes like uh, Barrister and Mann, Sterling, uh, Phoenix Shaving, and Chiseled Face. I'm looking for something complex and interesting. Uh, thanks, Mark. And tell George I said hi. Boy, you know what? We can go on and on and on. And I think what I want to do is I'll give you a few suggestions here. And I would like viewers to comment below and let us know what you think is a great fall winter scent. And we can compile a list and then we'll put it together and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll share that. Uh, in an upcoming Monday morning mailbag, and we'll uh, we'll feature that in the questions and comments section. Uh, maybe next week or the week after, depending on how many uh, responses we get. I know we're going to get a lot, though, so we're going to compile everything. Um, but here is something that I like. First of all, I like Barbershop and Bay Rum scents, and I think those are great year-round, but they're also great as whether it gets cooler and you're going into fall and winter. And any variation of Bay Rum uh, with... Uh, any kind of other scent, a leather scent, uh, that sort of thing. I always, I always like that. That kind of helps me go from the, the 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 warm summer months into those cooler autumn days and into uh, the winter season, even Christmas time. Uh, and by that, I mean like Atomic Pumpkin from Phoenix Shaving, right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, here's one right here, Cider House Five. That's not Bay Rum, but that does give you that nice crisp apple scent. Uh, that uh, kind of in it's kind of in the air, you know. The the apples are for sale and that sort of thing. Apple cider, yeah, that's a good one. Also, night to transition into the uh, into the fall season. Um, here, blue sawwin, that's a good one. You check that one out. Hopefully, that'll be available again this uh, fall from uh, Phoenix Shaving. I like this one a lot. So anything with a kind of a pumpkin scent or a variation of pumpkin, bay rum, apples, that kind of thing, I like that a lot. What else do I have here? Oh, some Christmas scents are always good. Uh, like this is Space Nog, kind of getting you ready for the Christmas season. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I like that a lot. You could use this year-round as well, but that's got that kind of great. You could use this maybe in the, in the, in the, in the later fall into early winter. This would be absolutely wonderful. Uh, the Shaving is also another one that's kind of a bay rum kind of a scent with some other things. <clears throat> other things going on there. Absolutely fantastic. Here's one, Diver Down. I like this one uh, year-round, but this is especially enjoyable in the fall and winter months. There's something about this scent. 
Oh yeah, this one's great. I like this one a lot. And then when I'm thinking of the fall and the winter, I'm also thinking an evening night out, those crisp, cool nights, you know, you want to go out for dinner, that sort of thing. So I'm thinking something a little more gentlemanly, a little more refined. So I'm thinking uh, Executive Man from Sterling Soap. That's a good one. Sharp Dressed Man from Sterling Soap. Any of the, um, the more refined man sense that the Sterling has. And again, you know, Sharp Dressed Man, Executive Man, those two fall into that category. I'm not sure if the others do, but those two uh, fall into that category for me. I like those a lot. Uh, they also have Christmas Eve. That's a great one. <laughs> that's terrific. Like that a lot. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That'll, that'll really, that's terrific. That'll be perfect for late fall going into the Christmas season, that sort of thing. So uh, that's kind of what I like. And I, uh, again, I like the refined sense for evening night out. This one that we recently talked about, Fair of 1812, that falls into that category. That is terrific. This is great for year round, but this would be perfect going into the fall and winter season. Like it, I mean, there are so many others that, uh, that uh, we could talk about. That's just kind of a quick overview that I wanted to show you. And I know there are more. So folks, if you have your favorites, you know, comment below and let us know. We'll put together a list and uh, share that in questions and comments. Brian, thanks very, very much for a really, really terrific, terrific question. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Bart Buzz wrote, uh, hi, Mark. Uh, I can get that same 7.05 ounce jar of Bustello instant coffee at my Walmart for $6.27. Uh, hey, thank you very much for that. I'm glad you confirmed that. So we're going to definitely look at Walmart for this. I'm going to go into the store. I'm going to look for it. And hopefully it's less than $7. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. When it comes to Witch Hazel, I've used Thayer's and Dickinson's. I don't mind the scent of Dickinson's. And at about a fourth of the cost, have been using it exclusively. For me, alum and Witch Hazel are the secret to irritation-free shaves. Thanks very much for confirming that because we've been talking about Thayer's in our post-shave routine. I went to Walmart and I found Thayer's facial toner right here. Original, alcohol-free with aloe vera. How about that? Uh, yeah, I've been using this uh, with my shaves now, and uh, you might see it inter interspersed with some reviews, even though I'm using it after every shave now. I have some reviews that are already queued, already scheduled, and those shaves may not be featuring the Thayer's. Others may. So I'm not, as I move things around, you're going to probably see some inconsistency there from shave to shave. But I am using it after every shave now. And yeah, a uh, big thank you to Mark Bagwell for all the great encouraging words on it because it is a game changer. And uh, I found the Thayer's. Uh, Thayer's was very, very prominent in my Walmart store. Go to the women's cosmetic section, women cosmetics section of Walmart, and that's where you will find it. You won't find this in the shaving section. You'll find it in the women's cosmetics section. That's where you'll find the Thayer's. And uh, they have this, they have lavender, they have cucumber. I hear cucumber is fantastic. So um, yeah, I got the original kind of uh, scent free and I am enjoying it quite a bit. So thanks very much for confirming that part. Really do appreciate it. Chris Bojrab wrote, glad you got the brush. Uh, yeah, trying to embed a printed piece of paper was more challenging than I expected. Well, yeah, here we'll talk about, we showed you the brush already, but we'll talk about his previous attempts here, right? And he's, you know, right here. <laughs> Needed to try to stabilize it with glue, but the glue then pacifies a bit and turned things murky. The second attempt was a bit better, but in trying to clean it up, uh, I got too far into the printed image. Definitely enjoying learning to do this stuff. Well, you know what? Uh, Beautiful, beautiful shaving brush, and uh, even your early attempts are great. I mentioned that I might use this as a paper paperweight. That's fantastic. I like that a lot. And uh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I might buy a spare knot and uh, fix it in here because, uh, you know, why let it go to waste? Yeah, that's fantastic. Really, really love it. Thank you so much, Chris. Really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think Kevin Weiss replied here. Uh, the brush you made, Mark, was wonderful. Uh, cheers, Kevin. Kevin, thank you very much for that. Yeah, Chris, it was absolutely wonderful. Fantastic, fantastic uh, shaving brush. Bob LaRoe wrote, I don't use brush holders. They're flat on the bottom, so I just set them on the shelf after rinsing and shaking out the water. Uh, well, there you go. There's that old debate uh, of whether uh, we should uh, hang a shaving brush. Well, let me get a shaving brush to show you. Hang on one. I'll be right back. Hang on one minute. Okay, I'm kind of moving things around in between uh, 
recording these segments and I put the shaving brush back into the uh, shave den, and I thought I'd bring it back for, il for illustration purposes. And uh, Bob said uh, he likes to just put his brush <laughs> flat on the bottom like this and stand, stand it up. He doesn't want to use a stand. But uh, yeah, this is the debate. Uh, whether you should uh, hang a brush like this in a, in a, in a stand in a holder like that, or if you should, should just stand it up like this and let it dry like that. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know, your shave den, your rules, however you want to do it. Uh, but I prefer to uh, hang the brush upside down. Here is my solar flare shaving brush from Phoenix Shaving with the butterscotch handle. Thanks, Mom. And uh, yeah, so I try to get a stand to accommodate it so that it'll... Uh, It'll just air out upside down like that. And uh, the thinking is, is the water moves away from the knot and it won't collect in that knot and rot it out over time, I believe, you know, affect the glue in some way negatively. Uh, and some folks just like to, you know, shake it out a lot and stand it up. Maybe that works for synthetic uh, shave knots and maybe with badger and bore, you know, natural hair shave knots, you have to be a little more careful. I'm not entirely sure, but you know what? Uh, Comment below and let us know what your routine is with the shave brush. Do you, do you uh, put them in a holder and invert them, hang them upside down like that? Or do you just shake them out really good and just, uh, you know, they've got flat bottoms on the handles and just stand them up like that and let them air out that way. Bob, thanks very, very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, have you tried Pearl's Coffee Scented Shave Soap? Yes, I have. I uh, used it in one of my reviews. And uh, a lot of folks commented, well, not a lot of folks, I've seen some comments uh, that claim it's a little more chocolate than it is coffee. Now, I got a little bit of that, so I kind of regard it as a, a, a coffee-scented uh, shave soap with a little bit of chocolate in it, with a little, little bit of a chocolate note in it. Uh, I, I, got, I, I got it as a coffee-scented shave soap, but it's not quite the coffee-scented soaps of the others that I have I've used. It's kind of off in its own area, so to speak. Some people get a little more chocolate. Some people get a little less chocolate scent. Uh, I'm kind of right in the middle there. I, I liked it. I made a great, great lather. So I, I have to go back and use it again and really sample the scent some more. But yeah, I got a little bit of a chocolate note from it. But again, I regard that as a, as a chocolate note within the coffee. That's <laughs> kind of the way I looked at it. Um, so yeah, I have used it and, uh, I thought it was very, very good as far as lathering quality. Uh, Chris Carruthers wrote, oh, regarding the gentleman commenting about Thayer's witch hazel, I have been using it exclusively for the last couple of months. Uh, I agree hundred percent. It has improved my skin tremendously as well as improved my post shave. I use the lavender centered Thayer's and love it. Yeah, Mark Bagwell has been giving us a lot of great information about Thayer's, and we will be talking about that uh, later on in the show, so stay tuned. Uh, he sent along a lot of great information, and he recommends Thayer's. Mark Bagwell uh, really speaks highly of Thayer's and uh, likes it a lot. And he's, he was telling me, for the couple bucks difference, uh, you know, spending a few dollars more for the Thayer's, get the Thayer's. It's worth it. And I, I've been using it now, and I like it a lot. Uh, and, uh, well, we'll see as the, week, as the weeks go on, because I'm going to use it after every single shave. I'm going to alternate using the alum uh, with it. Uh, sometimes I'll use the alum, sometimes I won't, depending on, you know, how my shave is going, I guess. Uh, uh, depending if I'm reviewing a shave soap, and I want to see what kind of feedback I get or reviewing a razor, then I'll use the alum block. But if I'm just going to be having a shave... Uh, I'll just probably dispense of the Allen block and use the Thayer's. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but I will tell you this, after I apply the Allen block and let it set up for about 35, 40 seconds, I rinse it off. Then I use the Thayer's. I want to make sure that the Allen is not on my face. I want to make sure that the Thayer's has immediate penetration to the skin. I don't want any kind of barrier in the way. So that's kind of uh, how I'm doing it right now. And I'm enjoying it. That's why sometimes I'll use the Allen block to get that feedback during a shaving review. And other times, if I'm just shaving, you know, not in front of the camera, I'm just going to go right to the Thayer's. So that's kind of my routine right now. So, yeah. Um, so, Chris, I'm glad it's working for you. That's terrific. Thank you very, very much for that. Oh, here's, here's uh, ecstatic temporal, temporality. 
uh, is asking, do you use it as a replacement to an Allen block or is this an addition to your routine? And Chris says, I use it as an addition to my routine after the Allen block. Then I use balm and aftershave splash after uh, the balm. Yeah, uh, now that's, again, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm using it in addition to the Allen block, but I'm not using the Allen block all the time. It depends on what I'm doing with my shave. If I'm reviewing a new razor or a new uh, shave soap, I want the feedback from the Allen block to see you know, if I'm getting any stinging or zinging. Uh, but if, uh, if I'm not going to be on camera and I, don't need to, I, and I don't need to record that feedback for the viewer to give them an idea of the protection and slickness and glide of a shave soap or razor, that sort of thing, I'm just going to use the, uh, the Thayers. Go right to the Thayers. And, and again, use the, when I use the Allen block, let it set up, rinse it off, then apply the Thayers. And then after that, yes, I use an aftershave splash as well and a little bit of a balm for upstairs and maybe some on the face as well. So uh, again, Chris, thanks very, very much for that. Ecstatic temporality. Uh, thank you again for your question. Uh, this comes from uh, Odin Arcade Double Zero. Uh, laugh out loud. Ever since I saw Home Alone as a small child, I never wanted to use alcohol-based aftershave. <laughs> Uh, if it irritates your skin that bad, don't use it. Balms are best. Same goes with soap during a bath or hand soap. Uh, if you get irritated, look for a better soap. You know what? Those, that, that's really great advice. Your face, your rules. Whatever works for you. But again, you know what? Check out Witch Hazel. Check out Witch Hazel. A lot of great skin benefits. And what, from, what, from what Mark Bagwell was telling me, the folks at Thayer's use a specific kind of uh, witch hazel plant grown in Connecticut. Uh, and it's supposed to be, according to what Mark was telling me, it's supposed to be one of the best uh, witch hazel plants in the world. And that's what they use exclusively for their witch hazel. So that's what I'm getting from Mark Bagwell. Another, another great reason to use Thayer's. The others are very, very good, but this one, because of that witch hazel plant, uh, really, really, you know, Top shelf. That's what I'm hearing. Viewer Fran Shaves wrote, uh, Mark Zerady, hi, do you recommend this one or the Solo Edge? On the other hand, they say that the leaf has fit problems. Uh, they become out of adjustment with use. Thanks. Uh, well, Fran Shaves, uh, to be honest with you, I've never used the uh, Solo Edge. I believe it's a Parker razor. I have not used that one yet, so I really can't speak to it. But I have used the uh, leaf twig, and that was what Fran Shaves was referring to, the leaf twig. And uh, you know what? I haven't had much problem with the mechanism at all, and uh, I have gotten some great shaves with it. And uh, yeah, it's, it seems to be working very, very well. I like the fact that when I snap a blade, those curled edges on the blade are kind of in the back here of the razor head and out of the way. They don't affect the alignment or the uh, flatness of the blade and the razor head. It's very maneuverable. Uh, I like the weight, I like the heft. I really enjoyed my shave with the leaf uh, twig. Now I have seen here and there a few comments regarding um, the fit of the mechanism in some way. Uh, and I'm, I can't address that because so far, uh, mine seems to be working quite well. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I'm two for two here. <laughs> And it seems to be working very well. A big thank you again to viewer Bill Murphy for very kindly sending this along to the channel, allowing me to share it with all the viewers out there. I'm enjoying using it. I really have. The shaves I've had with it are very, very good. It's mild, yet very efficient. And uh, I really, really enjoy using the leaf twig. So uh, I'm, it's not the thorn, the more aggressive one. It's the twig, which is the milder of the one. And I like a mild razor. Uh, and the ability, I like a mild razor and being able to put in a sharper blade. That, let me put it to you that way. That's kind of the approach that I like. And uh, again, I like the design of the razor head because in this area here is where the, where the curls of a snap blade will, will, will sit out of the way and it does not affect the flatness or alignment of the blade. That's really nice. I like that a lot. So I can't speak to the Solo Edge how the Solo Edge handles that. Uh, I have had one instance where I was using a, uh, um, a single edge razor. I think it was a Yaki single edge razor head. Really terrific. But 
Uh, the pre-snap blades are best for that because it lays nice and flat. And I found snapping a blade, those curls act like a little spring and that razor head didn't clamp down enough. Now, I'll have to revisit that razor as well and see what's what on that and snap another blade and see what kind of results I get. Maybe I just wasn't, you know, torquing down enough on it. I'm not sure. But, um, so I'm sorry, I can't really tell you about the, the Solo Edge. Uh, hope to, uh, you know, hope to uh, uh, acquire one down the road sometime and, and do a review of it and uh, see how it does compare to the uh, Leaf Twig and some of the other single edge razors we've talked about on the channel. So Fran Shaves, let us know what you do uh, if you acquire a Twig or a Solo Edge or some other single edge razor. So thanks very much for that. Uh, Mark Bagwell wrote, The Old Spice shaving creams are made in India, and unfortunately, they always use plastic tubes. Gillette also produces some of their shaving creams in India. Yeah, uh, thanks very much for that, Mark. Uh, Mark was commenting about uh, the Old Spice shave cream that we reviewed recently on the channel. Uh, this came courtesy... This came to the channel courtesy of viewer Greg Passanti. Greg, thank you again very, very much. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And it really, it paired up nicely with the Old Spice Aftershave Splash that Abhine Samanth kindly sent to the channel. That also came out of India. And uh, you could also use it with Phoenix Shavings Cold Spices. And you know what? This goes back to uh, what we talked about earlier in the refill segment about uh, shave soaps for uh, for the fall and uh, the winter. Old Spice, Old Spice, Cold Spices, anything in this ballpark, in my opinion, terrific. I mean, a terrific, terrific fall, winter scent. Great all year round, but there's something about this scent, uh, you know, going into the fall, going into the winter that uh, it just, I don't know, There's some, it just pairs up so nicely with that season, is, is my opinion, uh, which is why I kind of, I'm kind of attracted to these kinds of scents these classic barbershop kind of scents for the fall and winter season. Um, let me put it to you that way. So, uh, Mark, thanks very, very much for uh, the information, the additional background information on Old Spice Shaving Cream. Yeah, it is a plastic tube. And thanks again to Greg Passanti for uh, sending this along to the channel. Really, really do appreciate it. I really enjoyed the shave that it delivered. So thanks very much, gentlemen. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. My thanks to everyone who contributed Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, we have a brand new shave soap and aftershave splash in the shave den launching today from Hendrix Classics and Company. Uh, here it is, Ching Long from Hendrix Classics and Company. This launches today, July 22nd, 2024. Boy, this is terrific. Check out that artwork right there. That beautiful blue dragon there, the metallic label. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. And the scent, the scent is fabulous. Well, here's what Pete writes. Uh, Chinese dragon lore is much more complicated than you would think. I love dragons, and Year of the Dragon did well. Yeah, we reviewed Year of the Dragon shave soap from Hendrix Classics and Company. That scent was marvelous. So I want to do four per year if customers agree. The translation for Qinglong is Azure Dragon, which is why this fellow is blue. Qinglong is one of the dragon gods who represent the five regions' highest deities. He likes spring and summer. The fragrance is inspired by Creed's Green Irish Tweed. Yes, most artisans have done a version of this fragrance, though few, if any, have done it with an extra premium inspired by version, meaning that it will be better than almost all artisans inspired by versions. I can tell you right now, we reviewed this and the review runs this week. The scent filled the shave den. This is marvelous. And I can tell you right now, if I want to do a shave with a green Irish tweed fragrance, this is what I'm going to reach for. It's that good. He goes on to say, it will be very close to the original. The fragrance will last, have complexity and sophistication and silage, centrail. Yes, I can attest to all that. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, green Irish tweed by Creed is a woody floral musk fragrance for men. Green Irish Tweed was launched in 1985, was created by Oliver Creed and Pierre Borden, 
Top notes are lemon verbena and iris. Middle note is violet leaf. Base notes are ambergris and sandalwood. Uh, Green Irish Tweed by Creed is a classic fougere fragrance. One of the signature scents of the House of Creed, this walk through the Irish countryside, is a favorite of many celebrities. The fragrance is rich, fresh, sporty, and unforgettable. And if I recall correctly, Green Irish Tweed was created for actor Cary Grant in the 1980s. Yeah, an absolutely fantastic, fantastic scent. And yes, it is rich, fresh, sporty, unforgettable, masculine, refined, gentlemanly. It is absolutely wonderful. And going back to the show earlier about a recommendation for fall and winter scents, yeah, green Irish tweed is one of those two that will really just walk you right into the autumn and winter months very, very well. It's one of those scents, again, great for an evening night out that I was talking about. Uh, really terrific. And this, this particular representation of green Irish tweed is very, very good. So we'll have links below where you can get it when those links become available because it's launching today, July 22nd, 2024. From Hendrix Classics and Company, Ching Long Shave Soap and Aftershave Splash inspired by Creed's Green Irish Tweed. Really, really terrific. Look for the review later on this week. Thanks again to Pete Hendricks and everyone at Hendrix Classics and Company for very kindly sending these to the channel and allowing me to share them with all the viewers. Mark, Mark Bagwell checked in with a review and he writes, The other day I was asked, why are all my reviews positive? And here's my response. I test so many items each week, hardware and software, there is no way that Mark Zeredi, a.k.a. Big M, <laughs> could air all my reviews. He would have to post a show each day to cover all of them. So the only reviews I post are for the artisans and products I think are worthy to have a spotlight shined on them. One such master craftsman is Steve from Steve Woodhead Studio Pottery in Warwickshire, England. Recently, I purchased a Surabachi shaving bowl that is absolutely gorgeous as the photos show. It has a teak stain that has a wonderful depth to the color that the photos can't show. If the color teak is not to your liking, then he also makes this same bowl in a gorgeous blue or ivory. The bowl is 5.25 inches at the top, allowing you to swirl vigorously without banging the brush against the sides. The inside of the shaving bowl incorporates a series of fine lines that aids the brush in building a rich lather. And don't be afraid to be a little rough with it. The bowl is stoneware and you can happily pour boiling water into your shaving bowl as well as reheat it in the microwave if you want. Just don't try bouncing it against the walls. It may be tough, but it's still stoneware. Steve makes a bunch of different items you'll want to check out. Shaving bowls, scuttles, mugs, teapots, and a bunch of other things. You can find his store on Etsy, and a link will be posted. Back to you, Big M. Hey, Mark, thanks for an absolutely wonderful review of a great-looking Surabachi shave bowl. That is absolutely gorgeous. Again, as Mark mentioned, we'll have a link below to this wonderful, wonderful artisan up on Etsy, Steve Woodhead Studio Pottery in Warwickshire, England. Mark, thanks again very, very much. Well, we have another brand new shave soap to share with you on the show this morning. <laughs> that's, almost like a, that's almost like a tongue twister. A uh, brand new shave soap to share with you on the show. Hey, twice in a row. Uh, from the folks at First Line Shave, from Michael Riley and all the folks at First Line Shave, Visions of Dylan. Check that out. How about that, huh? This is going to launch, uh, be released uh, on July 25th. That's the game plan here. Uh, and he says here, I'm looking to have it released on July 25th. And here's what he writes. During his early years in Greenwich Village, Dylan became a pivotal part of the vibrant music scene where his poetic storytelling and innovative sound began to take shape. This era was crucial in defining his career as he captured the spirit of the times through his music. With a career spanning over six decades, 
Dylan's contributions have solidified his status as a true legend and an enduring icon in the music industry. This is why I felt it fitting to choose the inspired fragrance of Greenwich Village by Bond Number no. 9. This scent is such a crowd pleaser, and I truly can't get enough of it. Boy, this is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful scent. And again, we talk about great scents going into the fall season, the winter season. This one qualifies as that as well, although you can use it year-round. But boy, this really does capture that Greenwich Village City vibe. Yeah. Here's the uh, scent notes. The top notes are lychee, cassis, and mandarin orange. Let me spell that first one for you. L-I-T-C-H-I. It's the first time I've come across it. Lychee, I think is how it's pronounced. Lychee, cassis, and mandarin orange. The middle notes are water lily, peony, and jasmine. And the base notes are ambroxan, Praline, musk, vanilla, and oak moss. This is marvelous. It really is. And just hearing about those scent notes, it's going to capture the scent for you. My gosh. And again, First Line Shave is another soap base that is just wonderful. It just makes some beautiful, beautiful lather. And we have uh, reviewed their shave soaps and their shave soap collaborations here on the channel. They've been wonderful. We've uh, recently reviewed the uh, uh, Koyas, which was terrific. And here's a favorite uh, that uh, Beth Jones very kindly sent to the channel, Jude. Boy, this was great. And here is another one right here, Visions of Dylan. I'm really looking forward to reviewing this one and using it. This is a marvelous, marvelous scent. It has that... My God, it, it, it just has that great, clean city vibe to it, so to speak. Perfect for an evening night out or any kind of activity in a Greenwich Village city kind of setting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is, this is absolutely terrific. Visions of Dylan from First Line Shave. My sincere thanks to Michael Riley and everyone at First Line Shave for very kindly sending this one along to the channel and allowing me to share it with all the viewers. Michael, thank you again very, very much. Folks, we'll have a link to this below when it's launched on July 25th when those links become available. But we will link to First Line Shave so you can get up to their website and check out all their wonderful wet shaving soaps and splashes. Michael, thank you again very, very much. Hey, viewer Rodney Ripplinger checked in with a brand new shave soap that he's going to try and let us know how it performs sometime down the road. But he writes, Hi, Mark. I was snooping around on Pasteur's pharmacy site and found a soap I've been wanting to try. Cooper and French soaps are made somewhere near where I used to work. They have their soaps in three sizes, sample, three ounce, and five ounce. I've been looking at buying a three ounce size, which is $14.99. The five ounce is $21.99. The three ounce size is always out of stock. So I have been holding off because having never tried their products before, I wanted to start off with a three ounce to see how it is. Well, lo and behold, Pasteur's had a five ounce size on sale for $13.99. Cooper and French look like they have a number of interesting scents. The Chain of Lakes soap is named after the Chain of Lakes in and around Minneapolis. The scent won an award in a contest out west. I'll let you know how this stuff is. Cooper and French have pretty label artwork. Hey, Rodney, thanks very, very much for that. Really looking forward to your review on Chain of Lakes Shaving Soap from Cooper and French. Here's what they add uh, regarding this particular shave soap. Chain of Lakes is a tribute to our hometown and the sprawling lake environment that echoes the same feelings of this shaving soap. Chain of Lakes Regional Park is a stunning, must-see outdoor recreational area of five lakes in Minneapolis. The forested outdoors meets the stillness of the lakes and you feel that coming together of the fresh air, the calm water, and the woody wilderness, like this namesake soap. Wow, Rodney, it sounds absolutely wonderful. Really looking forward to your review. Check it out, folks. Chain of Lakes from Cooper and French. Rodney, thanks again very, very much. 
Mark Bagwell also sent along this heads up regarding Aqua Velva Spanish version. It's in a glass bottle, premium ingredients, and it's available at two websites. Aqua Velva Aftershave Spanish version is available at Small Flower. We will link it below. They want $10 for a bottle of it. And uh, Aqua Velva Spanish version is also available at The Razor Company, and uh, they want $12.99 for their bottle. So we'll provide those links below. My thanks to Mark Bagwell for the heads up on this because this is a Spanish version, and it really is wonderful. Again, premium ingredients, unlike the American version, and it comes in a glass bottle. So check it out from Small Flower and also The Razor Company. Thanks again to Mark Bagwell for the heads up on this. Really, really do appreciate it. And that, wrap, that wraps up this week's look at new wet shaving gear. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some of these questions and comments. Well, in a previous Monday morning mailbag, Al Spencer reported some really, really good results from using witch hazel. And he was saying, Mark, you think it's the witch hazel? Why my skin is improving so much? And Jack Capone also asked the same question, saying, you know what? I think the witch hazel post-shave routine is really helping my skin. Well, I recently uh, talked with Mark Bagwell, and his answer to the, both of these gentlemen and all the viewers out there is yes, absolutely, witch hazel in the post-shave routine will help your skin. Uh, and of course, Mark recommends Thayer's, as we mentioned earlier in the show. He really likes Thayer's a lot. And uh, he writes here, Thayer's, these powerful antioxidants promote anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, antimicrobial, anti-carcinogenic, and wound healing properties. Research studies on witch hazel and aloe vera have been proven to have skin soothing effects when applied topically on the skin and are recommended for sensitive and acne prone skin. Mark continues here, I prefer witch hazel over alum, less drying. I use Thayer's. Try not to use a witch hazel with alcohol. Dermatologists recommend alcohol free. Uh, for the man who spoke about misting witch hazel, I found this from Thayer's. Now there is a, a link that uh, Mark provided to a mister, uh, M-I-S-T-E-R, a uh, misting, uh, uh, misting dispenser bottle that Thayer's will sell. I happen to see it at Walmart uh, as well when I purchased this bottle of Thayer's right here, right there on the shelf. So if you want a spray bottle for misting the uh, witch hazel on your skin, that's also available. Uh, and uh, we'll have some other links to both Thayer's and Quinn's because Mark says that Quinn's is also a very good brand of uh, witch hazel. He writes here, Quinn's and Thayer's are the two best witch hazels made. Both have aloe vera, can't go wrong with either one. Most witch hazels come with alcohol. Never ever use these. The, the distilling process kills the tannins in the witch hazel. It's the tannins that are good for your skin. I found this on Google. So what exactly are tannins? If you've ever peeled a grape and tasted the skin, you know what we're talking about. The compounds that make it bitter are called tannins, and they're the same ones that ensure your favorite witch hazel skincare products work so well. Fruits, vegetables, and nuts contain tannins. Remember, let the witch hazel dry and don't wash off. Leave it on your skin. And witch hazel is great for hemorrhoids. Pour a little on a swab and apply. It takes away the itching and helps to reduce it. Do not use an eyes. Around the eyes is fine. Using as a deodorant, it kills the odor-causing bacteria, but it won't last. It works when applied. Uh, Mark continues here. So the question most people ask is, can a witch hazel toner work as an aftershave? The answer is yes, absolutely. Thayer's toner is actually a mixture of witch hazel and aloe, and everyone knows the benefits of aloe. 
So I'll focus more on the witch hazel, which works as an astringent that tightens up the pores and helps treat nicks and cuts. It's also an antiseptic and toner that cleanses your skin and prevents razor irritation. In other words, it's a great aftershave. But hey, some people like the burn of a splash. Remember the kid from Home Alone? <laughs> Here's that illustration again. Remember the kid from Home Alone when he slapped on a splash after shaving? Okay, maybe he wasn't a fan of the burn, but some people are. I myself love the European Aqua Velva, and I use it regularly, but only after I've applied Thayer's first. So yes, it's all right to use both. Your face, your rules. Uh, and then uh, we'll include the website for Thayer's and you can read up on the benefits regarding Witch Hazel. It really is a fantastic product. And as I have said, I am using it post-shave in all my shaves right here. And sometimes I'm using the Allen Block first and sometimes I'm not depending on what I'm using, what I'm reviewing, that sort of thing. But I'm definitely using the Thayer's post-shave for every shave now going, going forward. And I got this one at Walmart. Now, David Richland also added, regular witch hazel has 14% alcohol in it, which can be drying to the skin. Thayer's has no alcohol. It's what I use post-shave and find that it's very calming on my skin. I'll use regular witch hazel with the alcohol if I need the antiseptic quality of the alcohol after my shave. Otherwise, it's Thayer's all the way. Rodney also commented, Rodney Ripplinger also commented, your listener who mentioned that he thinks Thayer's Witch Hazel removed wrinkles, true, works for me. Possible the aloe vera in the formula may have something to do with it also. Thayer's grow their own Witch Hazel for extra quality control. Well, we mentioned that earlier in the show, and that's what Mark Bagwell passed along to us. And Rodney Ripplinger is confirming that. Thank you very much, Rodney. Uh, get the cucumber version. It's my favorite. Refreshing. I bought a bottle the other day at Walmart, and it was $7.75. Yeah, that's what I paid about for my bottle right here of the original Witch Hazel right here. Uh, you might have to look a bit for it, as sometimes it's in the women's cosmetic department. Well, we mentioned that as well. Thanks very much, Rodney. Walmart keeps the good stuff hidden for them, Rodney. Rodney, thank you very, very much for uh, adding to the discussion. Uh, thanks again to David Richland for adding to the discussion. And thanks, a big, big thank you to Mark Bagwell for all the great information regarding Thayer's Witch Hazel and Quinn's Witch Hazel. Really do appreciate it, Mark. But Thayer's, according to Mark Bagwell, that's the one to go with. That's the one I went with. That's the one I'll be using post-shave every shave. And uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing the great results that other wet shavers are seeing from their daily use of Thayer's Witch Hazel. Get the alcohol-free version with the aloe vera. Mark, thank you again very, very much. Viewer Robert Ross sent along this email, and the subject heading reads, Cheapskate no more. Use more shave soap. Uh, and he writes, Hi, Mark. As you know, Colonel Mully and I are pretty much world record holders for using the least amount of shave cream and soap. I've been boasting about using one 30-second teaspoon of soap along with one half tablespoon of distilled water. After having a less than satisfactory shave, I decided to quadruple the amount of shave soap I use while keeping the water amount constant. So that translates into one eighth teaspoon, AKA a dash of soap to a half tablespoon of distilled water. I agitated the soap water mixture for 75 seconds. The lather I got was incredible. It was dense and creamy with the result being excellent cushion and glide. In my quest to use the least amount of soap, I was forgetting that the point of traditional wet shaving is to enjoy the shave. By the way, with my new recipe, I got the most comfortable yet closest shave ever. Please inform Colonel Mully, he is the new world record holder for using the least amount of cream and or soap. I relinquish my title to him with great pleasure. Cheers. Bob Ross. Well, there it is. It's official. Colonel Mully, 
You are now the new world record holder for using the least amount of cream or soap to make a lather. And Bob, you're enjoying the traditional wet shave. <laughs> How about that? Great news. So Colonel Mully, enjoy the new title. And Bob, enjoy those shaves. Well, this is something we shared in a previous Second Cup podcast, and I wanted to share it again here on the Monday Morning Mailbag. It comes from viewer David Richland, and the title or the subject heading of his email was Clown Puke. <laughs> Hang in there with me. Uh, hey, Mark, I just discovered something I thought I would share with you and your listeners if you choose. Uh, I recently was looking at Barber Dave's and Such YouTube channel, and he was using a concoction he called clown puke. Uh, simply put, it's an amalgamation of many different soaps and creams, tallow and non-tallow. The idea is to not throw away the bottom of the containers that have just a little bit of soap or cream left, but to mix them together in a dedicated container. In time, there will be enough to use for a shave. I was intrigued and impatient, so I thought I would make a container of my own. I just scraped out soaps from Parasso Red and White, Lather and Wood, Cremo Cooling Menthol, Trader Joe's Mango Cream, and Taylor of Old Bond Street Sandalwood. No measuring, just eyeballing. I microwaved the mixture for 30 seconds so that it could be stirred thoroughly. I then put it in the refrigerator until it cooled. It's not a hard puck, but rather soft, sort of in between hard and cream. Barber Dave said that doing this is somehow synergistic and just works. I've tried it, and not only does it just work, but it's absolutely amazing. I do a face lather with my Simpsons brush, and as you would say, boom, lather. <laughs> the lather is very slick and very cushioning. I just got a fantastic shave. I don't know if you are aware of this, but I thought I'd share it with you and your uh, viewers. Uh, Dave Richland, he also adds here, uh, after I broadcast this on Second Cup, I heard your shout out uh, for the clown puke that I suggested a while back. Clown puke. <laughs> I want to say that I think your quip of calling it Franken soap is a much better name for it. After all, just like Dr. Frankenstein, it's a combination of different parts, just like the monster. Uh, it could also be called Franken cream or Franken crope, depending on the consistency of the end result, or Franken puck. Uh, that may cover it all. Hopefully, Barbara Dave hasn't trademarked the concoction. As always, great Monday morning mailbag and second cup podcast. That's from Dave. Richland. Well, folks, give it a try and let us know how it works for you. We're going to call it uh, Franken Puck uh, or Franken Soap. Uh, and uh, just take those little bits of leftover shave soap and shave cream and mix it up into one container and uh, go ahead and build a lather and let us know how it works for you and what your results are. So, David, uh, thanks very much for sending along uh, Clown Puke slash Franken Puck. Really, really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share. Please subscribe. Please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. Check out all the wonderful artisan soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review in this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out.
Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.